recording on the voice of music. This is the voice of music model 760 reel to reel tape recorder can use up to three and a half inch reels. I am recording at one and seven eighths inches per second. I got this recorder from John Clark or JRC Studios on YouTube. He had two of them, so he gave me one of them. I had to put a new knob on for the speed selector because the old one was lost and had to put some new screws to hold in the plastic plate, you know, that covers up the mechanism. The, you know, plastic, uh, you know, where it says voice and music and charger on it. Yeah, this machine's called the charger. And um, I also had to replace the VU meter. The original VU meter was dead. It was open circuit VU meter, so I luckily had another VU meter that was the same size, a spare VU meter, pretty much, that I put into the machine. And um, the resistance is different, so it's not accurate right now, although I think there are trimmers to adjust it. I'll probably adjust it sometime. But um, the meter does work. I can see it fluctuating as I make this recording. Um, and this is a probably somewhat rare tape recorder. Um, the apparently it was not a very successful model. They don't seem to be seen that often. I mean, you can see some of them on the internet, but they just don't seem to be as common as a lot of other recorders. Um, it is an American-made portable wheelchair reel. And even in America, most of the time you find a portable reel-to-reel, -reel, it's going to be a Japanese portable reel-to-reel. -reel. You hardly ever find American-made reel-to-reels or portable reel-to-reels. So them in themselves are a rarity. And um, I'm thinking this, and I'm thinking this machine probably wasn't success that successful, probably for two reasons. One, it was very expensive because I saw on the Voice of Music website, like a Voice of Music enthusiast website, this machine I think cost like $130 or something like that when it was new back in 1965. So you know that was a lot. That's, you know, $1965. So it was, one thing, very expensive. Another thing is it used a, a, a built-in rechargeable battery pack you could not run it on regular batteries. It did not have a place for regular batteries. You would have a, a 10 volt rechargeable battery pack built in the machine. Now, of course, um, this one's battery pack was missing, and even if it wasn't missing, it probably would not hold a charge at all. So I had to um, buy some ridiculously overpriced Radio Shack double A's, got eight rechargeable nickel metal hydride double A's made my own battery pack out of them and um, using that to run the machine and in my experience with trying to charge up that battery pack it will take forever to charge but it will not hold the charge for very long at all it seems even though they're brand new batteries it seems like they just don't want to hold the charge maybe I'm not charging it up enough I don't know maybe they have those internal shorts in the batteries I might need to try to rejuvenate them or something but but anyway, there I got them charged recently, and they're running the machine fine right now on about 10 volts. There's also an AC power input on the recorder, but the AC power input will not run the machine when the cord is plugged in. It will only charge the machine. If you want to run the machine on external power, there is a 12-volt DC jack provided for that. Also... I don't have the microphone for the machine, and the microphone jack had two RCA jacks, one for remote, one for microphone, and the one of the jacks had a smaller diameter inner piece of the plug that would not accept a regular RCA jack, and for some weird reason they made that the microphone part while the regular RCA jack was the remote. I don't know why they didn't do it the other way around. So I change the wiring inside so the regular sized RCA jack goes to the um, microphone part and because the way it was wired I couldn't wire the remote part to the other part so the remote parts disabled but that's not really that important anyway what's important is getting a regular jack to plug in for a microphone so I did that so I'm plugging it in a regular microphone now 
This machine is AC bias. Um, I think it uses silicon transistors, believe it or not. And because um, they're, they're not those old metal can types that those typical germaniums are in those long metal cans. These are in that TO92 or it's not exactly TO92. It's kind of like TO92, but kind of different-ish. And um, uses those kind of transistors. I believe they are silicon, and um, or I think they're silicon. And all the original capacitors are good, um, are in excellent shape, actually. It's amazing they're still as good as they are, because this machine was in almost mint condition, was probably never used until um, I got a hold of it because it had originally been sitting in a store di display at a place. You know, J John Clark told me about how it was sitting in a store. It was never sold, and they then finally, um, the, all the stuff from the store was just being, was getting thrown out, and these machines were about to get literally thrown out. Unused, hard-to-find, American-made portable reader reel tape recorders we're just going to get thrown into the landfill. Stupid, yes, very stupid. But John Clark came to the rescue and rescued these machines from the people throwing the stuff out, and um, they survived. So this is one of them operating. I also had to replace the belt. The original drive belt was deteriorated. Now this machine needs to use a round belt. I didn't have the right size round belt, so I had to use a square one. So when I use a square one, it has some issues with the speed because the belt flops around some when running at three and three fourths. Although it seems to run pretty much fine at one and seven eighths. Although the motor in this machine is getting old and a lot of times does not keep the most constant speed. But it is servo controlled though, nonetheless. It has a transistorized circuit to control the motor. So you know they put a lot of um, good designing into this recorder. And it's very well made. The case is all metal except for the plastic part under the reels. But the plastic part isn't any main supporting piece. It's just a covering piece. All the other stuff, or the mechanics and stuff, are all mounted onto the main metal chassis, which is also the main case of the machine. It's really a well-made machine. Very good quality. It's a shame that it's so hard to find or apparently so hard to find. Um, and just So I'm thinking because the rechargeable battery didn't hold the charge well, and because the price was so high originally, that is probably, in my guess, why it didn't seem to be that successful. And right now this is at 1 and 7 eighths, and as you can hear, the audio quality is pretty good for a 1 and 7 eighths, as most portables sound quite muffled at 1 and 7 eighths. But now we'll be setting the speed to 3 and 3 fourths, and let's see how that sounds. We're running the recorder at three and three fourths inches per second. You can hear the audio quality has a lot more treble, although you can probably hear some flutter, probably from the uh, square belt kind of twisting around on the spindle because it's wound in there in kind of an odd configuration. But um, it is such a neat machine and deserves. Um, good attention and restoration. If anyone finds one of these Voice of Music Model 760 recorders, don't pass it up. It's a special machine. It deserves restoration and demonstration and preservation. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to now set the level up higher because so far I've been speaking up to the mic. The level set all the way up and I'm speaking at arm's length distance. You can hear how it picks up. I hope you enjoyed the voice recording showing of the Voice of Music Model 760, the Charger. Well, there's my little recording on it. Another nice thing is since it was never used, the uh, tape head on it was in tip-top, zero-wear condition. It was absolutely fresh, not a speck of oxide was on that head whenever I got it. So, now we'll be showing how it records music at both 1 and 7 eighths and 3 and 3 fourths IPS. This is the song that will be played from the recorder, which was also recorded from YouTube onto the recorder.
Very nice. Now look how fast the rewind and fast forward is because it is really fast. Now when it's rewinding or fast forwarding the servo is turned off and the motor is run at full speed. Fast forward. You can also see that the brakes are spot on. Immediately the reels come to a halt. Now we can see how it looks without reels. And that's how the machine looks with no reels on it. Really, really awesome. <laughs> really, really awesome. That is it. The Voice of Music 760 or the Charger. Hope you enjoyed the presentation of this very delightful little tape recorder. A really, really neat machine. A great collector's item. A great machine to play around with and record and play back with. And to show off to your friends and say, hey, look at this cool vintage tape recorder. Do you want to record your voice? You can hear it back on an old 1960s reel-to-reel. -reel. The fun of recorders. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.